In this video, I'm reviewing the Universal Audio Vault 476P. It's the top of the range of the Vault series of audio interfaces, but a lot of this video will apply to the entire Vault range. The smaller 176, 276 and 476 units. I have so many questions I want answering about the 476P. What does it sound like? Is this the very best audio interface in this price range? Like so many tiresome YouTube thumbnails suggest and which clearly Universal Audio had no involvement with. I'll check out the full features, find out if it's good value for money, check out the build quality, all of that to come. Let's dive in. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want. And I'm on the really long winding road towards 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And um, it would really just make my day and mean uh, the world to me if you could hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It costs you nothing and it helps me massively. Uh, so thank you in advance. I appreciate it. These videos are not sponsored at all, but they are made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon go back into the channel. I buy gear, I review it, and then I give the gear away to my backers via a giveaway. If that's of interest, it's all linked below. I bought this Universal Audio unit with my own personal cash, so this unfortunately is not to be given away, but I will have a decision to make by the end of the video. Um, so let's get on with it. What are the features of the 476P? Well, it's an aptly named audio interface, 476P. Four combi XLR inputs and four outputs with four mic preamps and with built-in emulated 1176 style compression on each channel. UA say it has best in class and class leading 24-bit 192 kHz audio conversion. And these statements are someone's opinion and just kind of categorically untrue when the interface that I've been using previously, the SSL 12 from Solid State Logic, records at 32-bit 192 kHz. And I just wonder, like, how do these statements go unchallenged? It has two headphone outs with independent volumes, which is really nice to have for collaborative recording sessions. It can also be USB bus powered, which is so cool. That's a feature I love on my SSL 12. But some people, when I did the review, some people were concerned that maybe uh, USB power wouldn't supply enough for phantom power. Well, just to say, you don't need to worry about that. Devices like this often use step up voltage converters and condenser mics only need tiny amounts of current. So this is easy for USB-C. The 476P can be connected to iPhones and iPads via the USB-C port, but bear in mind, you will need the power adapter uh, you know, mains power for that because these devices won't supply the juice required. I just mentioned phantom power and that is a bit of a weird one with this device. When you activate phantom power on this unit, it's active on all four channels and there's no way around that. Now you'll probably find mixing different microphone types with this device with phantom power on, with the exception of course being ribbon mics. In fact, UA actually say in the manual, you know, be careful using phantom power because it could damage ribbon mics. Now there does seem to be some debate on this online, uh, people saying that modern ones, modern ribbon mics will be okay. But you know, I don't know, it depends. It's, it's up to you if you want to risk it. According to UA, mixing ribbon mics and condenser mics at the same time, not an option. And then there are a couple of features to the 476P that you might see them and think, gimmick? And of course, I am referring to the 76 compressor and the vintage preamp modes. Firstly, I would say just be a little careful with the marketing on UAD's website. And they say this, vintage mic preamp mode for recording your voice or guitar with the rich full sound of an iconic UA tri tube preamp. Now that has been cleverly worded. Note the sound of an iconic tube preamp, not tubes, this unit contains no tubes, but they are saying that it sounds like the Universal Audio 610 tube preamp. And it's DSP, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a bit. The 76 compressor, however, does contain a FET in the circuit, and it's trying to be, it's trying to emulate the iconic 1176 compressor. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's equal, but you know, it's trying to do that. And it has three modes, guitar, voice, or fast. And I kind of can't stand this. 
There are no controls, so these are the most basic compression modes. Don't get me wrong, these are nice to have, it's not a complaint, it's just that with the lack of controls, they're just a bit dumb. And having said that though, they do sound quite good. And of course, um, I will have some sound clips coming up in just a bit. This comes with a pretty nice software bundle, but it's worth noting that the Vault series don't support the DSP-based UAD plugins. And why should they? This is just one of the reasons why you might opt to go for one of the Apollo, the higher end units. It's just worth bearing that in mind. Moving on to build quality and the 476P is just beautifully designed and put together. It was actually a little smaller than I expected it to be. I love the metal construction, the wooden accents, the large knobs, the pretty meters. It's just very pleasing to look at and use. And I can't help but compare the build quality to my solid state logic SSL 12. And I will be doing a dedicated this, you know, one versus the other video. So obviously do get subscribed for that. But I think in this case, I have to go with, you know, the 476P for build quality, because it's just, it's just so good. Next, moving on to the user experience and user interface side of things and mirroring my comments of the build quality. I've just had such a pleasing good time using this interface. I've really liked the sound of everything that I've recorded through it. So this is all good news. I do want to go a little bit more in depth about the 76 compressor and vintage preamp modes, but I think before we do that, you need a little bit more context. So here are some sound clips for you to listen to. switching over to a vocal setup. This is without any of the kind of uh, bells and whistles in applied. Let's start by adding the uh, 610 tube kind of emulation circuit. So let's turn that on now. And there we go, that's on. I don't know uh, if I can really tell a huge difference uh, not like with the 4K button with the SSL 12, where you notice a bit of a volume jump and more kind of top end. This I think is more subtle and maybe that means, you know, you just, just leave it on. But anyway, I definitely now want to see what the compression sounds like and I'm going to switch uh, this uh, preamp emulation off and then I'll well, put them all together at the end. Let's do the compression now. Okay, and now that's with the compression and it is gonna be, it's gonna sound louder. And um, I tested this uh, briefly and I kind of liked it. Um, it's not as, it's not dialed into exactly how I would like it, but um, it's still potentially useful. I'm now gonna switch on the preamp uh, emulation and just see what it sounds like all together. Let's do that. And there we go, that's everything together. Any good? Do you like it? Um, we'll see. So starting with the 76 compressor, as limited as the settings are, like I said, it does kind of sound pretty good. There is a noticeable bump in volume when you engage it. So it's reducing some of the dynamic range and then it's giving it a big gain boost. And as you can see from the waveform, it's not just a perceived volume bump. The peak volume is far higher. Personally, I would have preferred it if they could maintain the same peak volume as the original signals whilst adding a nice hug of compression. The vintage preamp mode, however, I don't hear a huge difference when you engage it. 
it's the kind of thing where if you left it on during a, a recording session and you recorded a bunch of stuff with it engaged, it's not the kind of thing that you need to panic about. I don't even think that you'd need to do any kind of re-recording um, because it's pretty subtle. I don't mind that. Next onto value for money and alternatives. And we definitely need some context to understand the true value of the 476p. There are so many audio interfaces around this price range that, you know, it, it could just, this could be an hour long. So I've just selected just a handful of which of the ones I think are the most intriguing. Starting with the Solid State Logic SSL 12, it's a similar price. It's my current interface of choice. You can record 32-bit float. And whilst it's arguably not as sleek looking as the Universal Audio, it's superbly designed from a workflow perspective, subjectively speaking, of course, and has the ability to expand to a 12 channel interface via its ADAT port. It's a great interface. Next, we have the Audient ID44 Mark II. This is a slightly higher price and it has similar base specs, but it is far more flexible and feature-proof in my opinion. Really, it's designed with massive expansion in mind as it has two ADAT ports. This could be the hub for a much larger operation. Then we have the Tascam US 4x4HR. I love Tascam and this looks like a crazy bargain at just £250. It has very similar specs to the 476p except without the compression and fake DSB preamp sound. Really worth a look if you're on a tight budget. And then we have the Focusrite Scarlett 18i8. I couldn't leave Focusrite out as they're just so popular. It's slightly higher priced, but it has huge potential with broader I.O. options. And people do love the air function on the preamps, which adds a little high frequency boost. Definitely let me know which you think I should have included in this list, though. So value wise, whilst the 476p doesn't scream huge value for money, I think Depending on where your priorities lie, this could be a really fine purchase for so many people. I like so many elements to this unit, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Instead, let's do my pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros, because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So into the pros, and I would say this is super stylish. And I know that's subjective, but I just love the color scheme, the wooden accents, the meters, it's the business. I've been really impressed by the build quality. It's, you know, it's as good as any that I've seen around this price range. This can be USB powered, and I suggest that, you know, if you're anywhere apart from in the field, this is the way to power it. It comes with a pretty good software bundle. It shouldn't be the reason that you buy something like this, but you know, it helps. The 76 compressors sound surprisingly good. They're nice to have, but they come with a caveat, which which I think you already know. I would say this is good value. Not outstanding, but you know, really good. And onto the cons, and I'd say the XLRs being at the front of this device is, you know, a subjectively poor design choice. I just don't like it when my XLR cables are dangling off the front of a desk. That's just me. The phantom power is global. This is not a huge deal if you don't use ribbon mics, but still it could be a little bit inconvenient. And just for comparison, lots of other devices, including my SSL 12, have independent phantom power on each channel. It doesn't have 32-bit float. I think this is a real missed opportunity. The compressors are limited, there's no settings, plus the FET circuitry adds a touch of hiss to your noise floor. IO expansion is not possible, and this is quite a big con. I get it, Universal Audio don't want to cannibalize the higher end offerings such as the Apollo series, but still a lot of other units have this. There's no support for the DSP UAD plugins. Again, as above, UAD need to retain reasons for people to upgrade to their more expensive options. Finally, to my opinion, and like the title of this video says, a lot of pros, a lot of cons, and I think where this unit really excels is the user experience side of things. I've had such a good time using it um, and it's, it's quite inspiring. It's tactile, it's pleasing, as I said, it's good to look at. And you know, these, these kind of things can be quite inspiring for people. So uh, the 476 is kind of hard not to love. Where the 476 isn't perfect is, well, you saw the cons, you know, and I think the cons 
boil down to the fact that Universal Audio, like I mentioned, don't want to cannibalize the higher end offerings in their range. And I'm not even saying that that's wrong. I completely understand why they've made the decisions they did with this unit. And I think that's really fair and sensible from a business's point of view, but you know, it's a crowded market. So, you know, you, you've got to be on your game. And also remember, I've got a video coming where I pit this against my SSL 12 in a kind of head to head, you know, versus video. So definitely get subscribed because that is going to be wild. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. What did I miss? Do you agree? Definitely let me know. I'll be in the comments section as much as I can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next. So, you know, do what you're told. <laughs> and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.